Okay, so let's let's agree on one thing. That is half of what we do in healthcare is useless or dangerous. Because a lot of what we do in the clinics and the hospitals, there's no evidence base for it. Maybe there's a little bit of evidence. Maybe they had some clinical trials done long time ago. Maybe there is some um, way of tracking these outcomes. Maybe some of it is just what we were taught in medical school. You know, what our professors learned when they went to medical school. And so uh, there is a lot of that knowledge that has been passed down from professors to their students, from their from that those students to their their students, and so a lot of uh, dogma has gotten into healthcare because people do things, and when you ask them why are you doing this, their answer is this is what I learned in medical school, this is what my professors taught me, and this is what we do, um, and if you if you carefully look at what people are doing in, in, in terms of practice, and if you carefully track the outcomes for patients, I would say about half of it becomes useless or sometimes it's dangerous. Um, which also means that there are other factors that go into this decision-making. Maybe that's what the best practitioner in their hospital or in their state does. Maybe that is what uh, the best, uh, uh, you know, the guidelines that the hospital follows. Uh, maybe that's what um, uh, they say you should do. Maybe that's what the clinic says you should uh, 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 do, or the hospital has their own guidelines. Maybe that's what their society uh, says you should do. But when you think about evidence you know, and how it is generated, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, I would say, extraneous factors that go into that decision making, that go into that, um, that research. Um, when you think about, okay, a certain drug, drug A versus drug B, well, depends on how well the drug company, the pharmaceutical company that is testing that drug, uh, how well are they funded? And how big can they do a research study? How well can they conduct the research study? And until somebody comes and disproves that, you know, we still take that as for granted because they have done their research. But then that research was done 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 50 years ago. And we still follow those, um, those recommendations or guidelines. So um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the big picture in healthcare and what is happening. Uh, and then, you know, obviously, I know I, uh, this is more of a US based um, impressions. But, you know, eventually this will apply to the rest of the world. And even in India, you know, I see that some of these changes happening. And so I'll give you a big picture first. So first thing that is happening is that the population is aging. Uh, for example, as we uh, as countries develop, the younger population, which is at the bottom of this graph, if you can see this graph, uh, at the bottom of the graph, it shrinks. So there are less and less babies born. And people are living longer. So you see at the top, where there is older population, their numbers increase. And so when that happens, you know that there's a lot heavier load on the healthcare system. Because as people get older, they have more diseases, more chronic disease, and they will need more care. And that is why it costs more money to take care of them. And so here is an, you know, a rough uh, estimate of how much it costs to take care of 
patients. If you are 65, it costs about $20,000 on average. And by the way, these are 2017 numbers. And so now it must have gone up even more. And if you're, if you're 30, you know, you're much healthier, so it'll cost less. So as time goes on, the, con the countries, they become more developed, which means that they're producing less babies. And so there'll be much older population. So relatively, the cost of care keeps going up. Here's the um, world economies based on their GDP. Um, again, this is uh, a few years old, but it's relatively you know, the same right now. Um, so USA is the largest economy, and then China, Japan, Germany, UK, France, and India. Um, I'm sure India has grown a little bit more and, and has uh, uh, come moved more to the left. But um, overall, you can see how these big economies are the size of the big economies relative to what they spend on healthcare. In the US, roughly 20% of the economy or 20% of the budget is spent on healthcare. Now, if you put that on this graph, it'll be about as big as the economy of Germany. Now, this is the whole country of Germany, which is the fourth largest economy in this graph. And so that is the amount of money US is spending on healthcare. And that's pretty big. And it, and it keeps growing. The percentage of healthcare spend is growing each year, which means that it becomes unsustainable in the future. And that is, that is a trend in, in most countries, but obviously US is, is, is the worst um, when it comes to cost of um, providing healthcare. Um, this graph uh, looks at consumer price index, and which means that, you know, how much does something cost over time, right? Roughly, we are looking at relative numbers. So, um, you know, for example, you know, if you look at, you know, at the bottom, you know, healthcare is the, obviously the purple one. This is the one that it keeps going up and up and up. Uh, housing has been relatively stable. Food, transportation have been relatively stable. Transportation actually came down um, because you know we are building better, uh, better automobiles and better public transportation. Uh, look at clothing. Clothing has actually come down, so it is cheaper to buy clothes uh, relatively now than it was in 1984. But what is happening with healthcare? Healthcare keeps going up, and that is not, you know, uh, sustainable in the long run. Um, if we look at the advanced countries, and we look at spending on healthcare compared to their performance, you know, when we look at performance, we we look at you know things like you kind know, of how long do people live, how is their infant mortality rate. How is their, you know, uh, how well are they able to take care of their elderly? How well are they able to control high, high blood pressure or diabetes or things like that or cancer? If you look at this graph, you can see that the U.S. is spending a lot of money. In fact, it spends more money than any other country. And uh, you can see that U.K., Australia, Netherlands, and these other advanced countries um, and performance-wise, it is very poor out of these, you know, if you, if you look at the line that crosses here, the gray line, that's the average. And, and the U.S. is way at the bottom. But on spending, it is way to the right. That means it's very spending a lot of money. And what is happening with research? Um, the research studies keep increasing. There's more and more research happening. Um, in fact, you know, now I think, uh, you know, this is only till 2018, maybe half of 2000, 2017. Now, 
it, you know, uh, the number of studies has shot up so much that it will go beyond this graph, obviously. And so there's so much new knowledge that is coming in. So these are some of the big problems uh, that the US uh, physicians are facing, you know, reimbursement, how do you get paid? The regulations, you know, you know the government wants to control how you practice. And then uh, medical legal, uh, where lawsuits on, on malpractice uh, lawsuits, especially, are, are increasing and how do you protect yourself? Uh, so these are the big problems facing the US physicians, but I'm sure um, this will slowly spread to the rest of the world also. Um, this is a survey done by Medscape on uh, physicians. About half of the physicians complain being burnt out, which means that they're working too hard and they're stressed out and there's depression and anxiety, uh, which is a sad thing uh, because we want our physicians to be healthy and, uh, and, and be able to take care of our population better. Um, so what is happening with data? Uh, data on the technology side, there is more and more data coming our way. You know, there are more research studies, more uh, speed of hardware uh, and, and the software and the, and the algorithms keep growing. So on the data side, there's no, no um, scarcity. There's a lot of data available. 